chapter, and I have the clock set right there before me. I want to try and be done by 1245, just as we so that we can get to what we're doing. Y'all, if you give me 30 power minutes, somebody say 30 power minutes. 30 power minutes. If I can get that, you ever had a power nap? Yes. Come on, man. I, I know what I'm talking about. Now, when I used to work overnight, 11 to 7, I used to take power nap. I had a 15 minute break, but seven and a minute, man, God, I was yes. sleeping hard, focusing on my sleep so that I could eat on my other eight minutes, amen? So y'all, we gonna have some power preaching today, amen? Amen. amen. Psalms, the 35th chapter, verse 27. If you have your Bibles, whip them out. Y'all, don't get comfortable with the screen. Always have your Bible out, all right? If you have your Bibles, whip them out. Oh, yeah, whip them out like a sword. And you're looking at me, whip it out. That's right, whip it out like a sword. Uh, Psalms, the 35th chapter, we're going to begin at verse 27. Hold on, brother, right now. Since you up front, I know it's, I know it's a little touch, but, uh, amen? Amen. Psalms, the 35th chapter, uh, verse 27. It says, let them shout for joy and be what? Glad. Come on, let them shout for joy and be what? Glad. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Man, God, he ain't been to church in a couple of weeks. So you're back happy. Yeah. Let them shout for joy and be what? Glad! Who favor my righteous cause. And let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified. Who has pleasure in the what? Prosperity of his servants. Oh, y'all know where I'm going today. Let me say this again. Let the Lord be magnified. Who has pleasure in the what? Prosperity of his servants. Who can guess? Just shout it out. We family in here. We can do church the way we want to do it. Who can guess? That's right, holy three. Who can guess what we're going to talk about today? Prosperity. Prosperity. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that prosperity tree. Uh, y'all, I don't know where they find these pictures. But look at that prosperity tree. Y'all, listen. We're going to talk about prosperity today. Okay? Because, listen, there's a lot of misconceptions about prosperity. And watch this. There's a lot of things that you have to do in order to become prosperous. Amen? Amen. Y'all listen, prosperity is your portion, but stop thinking you ain't got nothing to do. Amen. Stop thinking you don't have a part to play in your prosperity. Amen. Let me say that again. Stop thinking you don't have a part to play in your prosperity. See, we don't got church confused. Watch this. And all we want is a laying on of the hand. Listen, listen. I said, that's all you want. <laughs> How many of y'all know this more to the story? It, it ain't just that, that ain't all that comes to this prosperity thing. Now, prosperity is defined as successful. I'm sorry. Prosperity is defined as a successful, flourishing, or thriving condition. If you're taking notes, write these words down. Successful, flourishing, and thriving. Y'all, successful, flourishing, and and thriving condition. So I want you to ask yourselves, and you know, to yourselves, how are the conditions of certain areas in your life? How are the conditions of certain areas in your life? Are they successful? Are they flourishing? Oh, there it is. She's trying to stop it. Are they thriving? Y'all listen, I don't mind that that I heard myself. It's when you hear other things. You know when people phone go off in church. When the pimps in the crib. I, 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 listen, y'all. Y'all laughing, but I heard that in church. People, people phones with the ring toes go off. I heard some stuff in church or just in some places that wasn't supposed to. I thought that was a ring tone. That was, that was close. I thought that was. Okay, watch this. How are the conditions of certain areas in your life? Think about this, you all. Are they successful? Are they flourishing? Hmm. Are they thriving? Well, let me put it to you like this. In what condition is your health? Ooh, is it successful? Is your health flourishing? Is your health thriving? In what condition is your marriage? In what condition are your finances? In what condition is your spiritual life? Watch this. The sooner you're able to identify what condition a particular thing is in, the faster you're able to get your upgrade. Oh, God, Jesus. The sooner you're able to identify what condition a particular thing is in, the sooner you're able to get your upgrade. Okay, let's break it down, Sister, Sister Johnson's are back. Come on. <laughs> let's break it down on the automotive tip. Come on. Go ahead, then. How do you know when you need the brakes? Depending on what condition, right, your brakes are in. 
Now, if your brakes ain't thriving and flourishing, that means you hear a little squeak when you stop. That means you start to see brown. Am I right, man of God? You start to see brown stuff around that rim, you all. Listen, that's an indication of the condition of your brakes. And watch this. When you can identify the condition of a certain thing, that's when you'll be able to walk into your upgrade faster. See, some of us have not been able to spiritually identify what condition certain things are in. You have to know where your prayer life is. Is it flourishing? Is it thriving? Is it getting better? All right, watch this. Have, have you went from praying seven minutes a day to 15 minutes? Right. Y'all, that means your prayer life is prospering. That means it's, it's thriving. It, it's growing. Because there's no way you can be in the face of God and not want to be in his face longer. You all, you have to ask yourself, what condition are certain things in? Y'all had a pair of pants that I like. <laughs> but the condition is changing. <laughs> not of the pants, of the body. <laughs> Even this suit, the condition is Starting to change on them. Y'all, I'm feeling a little tight. So, you know, you got that tight on, y'all. I don't like that tight on. Listen, when I'm in the gym, I don't mind with the, But on Sunday, I don't like that. You know how somebody suit too little? Not that they swole, they suit too little. Y'all, I'm able to identify the condition that things are changing. Now, I'm using those illustrations with you all, but that's how it is in the spirit world as well. Y'all, you have to identify the condition of where you are in Christ. Are you thriving? Are you flourishing? Are you successful? For some of you all, it's time for your spiritual upgrade. Your way of thinking about prosperity is outdated, old-fashioned, and out of style. And God is saying, I need to upgrade you so that I can prosper. Come on. Let me say that again. Your way of thinking about prosperity is outdated, old-fashioned, and it's out of style, and God is saying, I need to upgrade you so that I can prosper you. Now, y'all, I don't like many songs. Well, I ain't gonna lie. I like a lot of songs about Beyonce. But one of the songs that I really like about Beyonce is, Come, let me upgrade you. She said, let me switch that title to Purple Label. She, y'all, y'all, listen. She said, listen, let me show you. What if y'all, for some of y'all, God is saying, I've been waiting to upgrade you. Your way of thinking about prosperity is outdated. God said, I got something fresh for you. So today, God said, let me upgrade you today, baby. Let's switch that tie to purple label. Now watch this. Here. The most common reason for an upgrade is when something is out of date or hasn't been refreshed, right? And the devil has fight some of us so hard in the area of prosperity that many people have begun to think that maybe they're not supposed to walk in prosperity in the area of finances. Maybe, you know, maybe I'm not supposed to have a husband or wife. Maybe I'm not supposed to be my own boss. But God is saying, I need to refresh you before I can upgrade you. You all watch this. You ever been on a website and things are working fine? And then things ain't working no more. You click in the links, right? Like, wait, what's going on? What you do? You go to the top of that page and you hit what? You hit that refresh button. See, some of y'all need a spiritual refresh. Some of y'all need to go to the top of the page in the Bible and click on that refresh button. Wait a minute, Lord. All this struggle, all this lack. Yes, Lord. Oh, this ain't working out. I need a refreshing. And when I refresh, God said, that's when I can upgrade. I need to refresh you yeah. about, about what you think about yourself, y'all. We are not a church or a people that's just supposed to take and always counteract what the devil throw at us. Oh, wow. We're supposed to be proactive yeah. on the enemy. Yes. Watch this. We're supposed to be out thinking him. Because any and every way he can get in, y'all, he want to get in. I had to remind somebody of that this week. Mm. Regardless of if you get up on your game as a saint today, on mm. Monday or Tuesday, the devil was already up early in you. Jesus. He's already up plotting on you. Mm. So when you don't feel like it, that's when he pounces on you the hardest. Mm. See, it's easy when you had a good night of prayer. Come you on. just got off the prayer line. Come oh, on. I'm not going for it today. Yeah. But he gets you when you miss the prayer line. You had a fight the night before. You didn't get no sleep. And guess what? He's ready to attack. So God is saying, I need to refresh you in some areas so that you can prosper in all of your areas. Now watch this. Look at verse 27 again. It says, let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause. And let them say continually, 
The Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. So one of the things you need to be reminded of today is God has pleasure when you prosper as long as you're doing his will. Look at that scripture again. Let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Not just any old body. Who's that? Is that mine? You see, you see? Oh, oh yeah. Call it out. Oh, let me let that periscope off. That was John Hannah's notification. All right? Listen, it says that he has pleasure in the prosperity of his what? Servant. Mm. Oh, ain't nobody. Oh, no, no. I know. But that's how it is. People miss that part. He got pleasure in the prosperity. No, of his what? Servant. I have pleasure when my servants prosper. Yes. People that's going to do my will. So you can have, so God will have pleasure in your prosperity so long as you do his will. See, watch this. The devil wants you to act outside of the will of God. Watch this. So he can petition against your prosperity. My God, Jesus. Y'all, that's the kicker about sin. <laughs> it ain't all just about fulfilling your lust. Whatever it is. Because it ain't always sexual. Some people ain't thinking about sex like that. Some people think about some money making schemes. Okay? Because a lot of us have had enough sex. And sex ain't got us nowhere. Everything ain't about sex. Some of us thinking of some money making schemes. So, so the devil wants you to, watch this, act outside of God's will. That's that servant. A servant is, is in line with the will of the master, right? A servant is in line with the master. So when the devil comes, he wants to get you to act outside of God's will so you won't be acting as a servant. And when he gets you to do that, now he can hold a petition up against your prosperity. Wait a minute, God. Don't bless him. Look, look what he did. Saturday night. Not Saturday night, Saturday night. <laughs> you know how the old folks used to say Saturday? Saturday night. Look what, he, look what he was doing. Saturday. Saturday night. Look what he was doing Monday morning. Right. The enemy is always waiting to put a petition up against your prosperity. That's why he wants you to sin so hard. Watch this. And if he can engage you in sin, the Bible says that sin stinks in God's nostrils. So anything that stinks, you put away from you. You, 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 put, you create space. Sin creates space between you and God. So you can't get the blessing because if he opened up the window and pull out a blessing, if you ain't under the window, you ain't getting the blessing. See, sin put that space in you so you won't be under the window. God said, I pour it out. But your sin pushed you away from the window. And now we begin to indict God. We got to be ever mindful of our servanthood. We think that we can just get saved and get them hands laid and that's it. We have to be a servant. And a servant does everything the master commands of him. So again, he wants you to act outside of the will of God so he can petition against your prosperity. The scripture says that the Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. A servant is a person who does the will of his master. This is why people struggle in their walk with the Lord. Yes, he wants to bless you. Yes, he wants to prosper you. But yes, you have to be a servant. Jesus. Yes, he wants to bless me. Yes. Yes, he wants to prosper me, but yes, I have to be a servant. You have to keep this in your mind that everything costs something. Everything don't cost the same thing, but everything costs something. Let me say that. I want y'all to say that after I say it. Everything costs what? Something. We're going to say it three times. Everything costs what? Something. One for the Father, one for the Son, and the last one for the Holy Ghost. Everything costs what? Something. Something. Fellas. <laughs> fellas, fellas. When you said you loved that woman. <laughs> y'all, when I was, you know, when I had my swag, I'll get a lean on me. Be waiting outside the church for the first lady. Y'all, fellas, when you said you loved that woman, you had exactly no idea how much it will cost you. Amen. What are you saying, Pastor? 
everything costs something. You all, my marriage has cost.